In this video, we will describe how to solve differential equations using Mathematica. The command to solve uh, a differential equation analytically is dsolve. So if we type question mark and then dsolve, uh, we see the structure of the command that we need to use. Um, the command to, yield, to solve a differential equation numerically is and dissolve and to see the syntax we can type question mark and dissolve and we see that this is the syntax so in this video we're going to see some examples of solving ordinary dif differential equations numerically and analytically with Mathematica so as a first example let's consider a, a linear differential equation um, so let's type d solve and then let's consider the equation x prime of t equals x of t and um, following this syntax here we need to specify the unknown and that's x of t and the parameter uh, with respect to which we're solving the independent variable in this case it is t so if we type this command and hit uh, shift return Mathematica will uh, compute analytically the solution and we see that it's a constant c1 times e to the t um, that's the well-known solution to this uh, ordinary uh, differential equation um, in this case we haven't specified any initial conditions so the parameter c1 is unknown if we want to specify initial conditions we can add it to the collection of equations that we have here so we can treat the initial condition as one more equation and let's assume that x of 0 equals 1 and then if we ask Mathematica to solve this system it imposes the condition that x of 0 should be 1 Therefore, uh, because e to the 0 is 1, the constant c1 had to be 1. So Mathematica automatically calculated the appropriate value of the constant and uh, provides us with the correct solution that satisfies this differential equation and this initial condition. Now, uh, let's suppose that we want to solve this equation numerically. Uh, so to do that we will uh, follow almost the same syntax uh, and in fact I can copy and paste this here and I just have to type n dissolve um, but also I need to specify an initial and a final value for, for the time parameter t um, so let's assume that the t min or t initial, let's call it t initial equals zero, and let's call t final equal, um, let's suppose that t final is one, and we need to say that I want t to go from the initial value ti up to the final value tf. So these are the main differences in syntax between dissolve and n dissolve. First of all, you have the n here, and second, uh, t is not just a free parameter. You need to specify where to start and where to stop the numerical integration. Uh, so if we if we do this, Mathematica will compute the solution uh, numerically, and it will interpolate the solution and create an interpolating function object that we can use and you can already see the shape of the solution here um, and uh, you can click on here for more details now if I want to plot this solution or evaluate it it is convenient to name this solution so let's call it sol1 and then if I type uh, let's see so let's name the solution x, uh, let's call it capital X of t and then I can type 
x of t slash dot and then we know that the slash dot command if it's, if it's followed by uh, brackets and x of t in an arrow it becomes a replacement rule um, so in this case I can just type so one uh, but because there are two brackets here I need to specify to pick up the first element of this list so I'm going to type bracket bracket one and indeed this uh, defines uh, an x of t that's an interpolating function of t and uh, now if I want to plot I can simply say x of t and then specify the quantity that I'm plotting with respect to and that's t and I'm plotting from ti up to tf from 0 to 1 basically okay and uh, this is the numerical solution if we want to we can also plot the analytical solution um, which we obtained earlier it's e to the t so I could just copy paste that for convenience here and subtract the numerical solution uh, subtract the analytical solution from the numerical solution and plot the difference and if I do that we see that uh, there's a small difference between them the error is around 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 6 uh, there are ways to uh, ask Mathematica to solve this more accurately uh, so for example you can if you look at the documentation um, let's click here and look at the local documentation um, you can scroll down and see many examples of solving uh, ODEs and PDs and if you go to options you can look at accuracy goal and see look at ways to increase the accuracy goal and precision goal so let's try these commands um, over here in nd solve uh, let's try accuracy goal um, let's try 13 here and let's try 16 here for example and uh, let's repeat the other commands and now we see that the accuracy is a little better um, and you can play around with these parameters and try and improve the accuracy okay so uh, this example was uh, a very basic uh, linear PD uh, which shows us exponential growth basically uh, so let's type exponential growth here um, and we know that this, for example, describes epidemics uh, at an early stage and so on. Um, so now let's look at a uh, slightly more non-trivial equation. So this equation is linear. It's very easy to solve. And uh, let's consider logistic growth. So in logistic growth, uh, we have an extra term here um, x of t minus x of t squared and let's change the initial condition to be one half and uh, we can solve this analytically and uh, that's the solution um, if I didn't specify so let's Let's delete the initial condition for a minute. If I don't specify that, then Mathematica, as usual, uh, will return a solution with an unknown constant coefficient here, and that coefficient can be determined uh, by the initial conditions. So let's put that back in. So if I assume that initially x has to be one half, then Mathematica will impose that initial condition to determine the value of that coefficient and c has to be zero in order for this condition to be satisfied and we get this exact solution so now uh, let's repeat what we did before 
and let's try and solve this numerically. Um, so let's define a t initial equals zero and a t final equals five. And let's type and dissolve here. And then let's take t to go from t initial to t final. Okay, so that's the syntax same as before, except we give initial final values to t. And instead of dissolve, we have and dissolve. So let's try that. And Mathematica indeed calculated a numerical solution and returned an interpolating function object. So let's call this sol2. And uh, let's define the solution x of t. Uh, to be x of t slash dot so two and again we need to pick up the first element from that list of uh, solutions because we have double brackets here um, and then we can plot the result x of t from t going from ti to tf and um, that's the solution we can use axis labels uh, these are t and uh, x of t um, and we need to use brackets here or uh, quotes actually um, for these quantities to be displayed properly otherwise Mathematica will do numerical operations between those parameters so x times t became t times x and so on so if we use quotes and then we ensure that these quantities are displayed properly um, okay so we can also compute the error uh, so we already know the solution analytically here so we may subtract it from the numerical solution and then what we plot in here is the difference delta x the numerical error and we see that again the error is around 10 to minus uh, 8 or 10 to minus 7 um, so that's the error in the numerical solution that Mathematica computed and again you can use accuracy goal and so on uh, to improve that accuracy um, so this kind of uh, differential equation describes epidemics in an early stage for example if you look at uh, the COVID-19 epidemic in Italy at the early stages you can fit a curve like that to the data uh, module appropriate rescalings of the time parameters um, and you can see that this actually fits the data pretty well at the at an early stage um, the next kind of differential equation i want to consider so let's go back to another example of a linear equation and that is the harmonic motion or a harmonic oscillator uh, so in particular if you have a spring uh, with a spring constant k and you tie a mass uh, of mass m then uh, the force on the spring constant uh, the force on the spring is, is minus kx and from Newton's law, we know that uh, F equals MA and MA is M times acceleration. So mass times acceleration equals the spring force, which is minus KX. So this is basically Newton's first law um, or Newton's second law, actually. Um, and we can make this equation dimensionless with an appropriate redefinition of uh, the time and the space uh, var uh, variables so with an appropriate redefinition of 
t and x, uh, we can bring this equation to in the form m equals 1, k equals 1, simply by absorbing m and k into the definitions of x and t. Um, okay, so if we ask Mathematica to solve this system, it will give us a solution that looks like this. It's a sinusoidal solution uh, with sines and cosines. And I haven't specified any initial conditions here. Um, for simplicity, let me er delete M and K. Um, so let's make this a little simpler. And then um, let's assume an initial condition X of zero equals one. And now remember, this is a second order differential equation, so which, mean, which means uh, we need two initial conditions. So the second initial condition is going to be the velocity. And let's assume that the initial velocity x prime of zero equals zero. So that means uh, initially the spring is, uh, mass is, is at rest and uh, the spring is extended and we let it go and then uh, this is the solution um, okay so uh, of course we can plot this solution if we want to uh, but let's try and solve this uh, equation numerically again so um, let's try and d solve and then the remaining commands are almost the same uh, but we need to specify the integration time initially zero and finally um, so we know that 2 pi 2 p is a period so let's let's do 10 periods or five periods actually um, so that will be 10 p and then we specify here that time goes from t i up to up to t f. Okay, so if we do that, Mathematica will calculate a numerical solution and create an interpolating function object, like before. So this was sol two. Let's call this sol three, and then. Let's just uh, repeat this definition. So we define the solution to be a function, except now this will be sol three. And let's plot again the results. We can actually reuse the same command as before. Uh, so let's repeat those commands here. Um, the only difference now is the analytical solution is going to be different. In this case, it's cosine of t. Um, okay, so we see that the solution looks sinusoidal as it should. And if we subtract the exact solution from the numerical solution, we get something that's that looks like this. So we see that the error is of order 10 minus seven or ten to minus eight and it increases as time goes by um, and that's because uh, the method that Mathematica chose to solve this differential equation may not be the best uh, you have some control over what method uh, you want Mathematica to use but uh, we're not gonna cover this in this video um, if you want to find uh, some methods that have are being used for example you can type runge kuta in the search we will cover runge kuta methods in a future video uh, but for now I'm that we're just describing the core functionality uh, so you can look at explicit runge kuta method for any solve or you can use a symplectic partition runge kuta or an implicit runge kuda and so on. Um, so you can try some of these methods described here uh, to get better behavior. 
uh, we will go through such methods in more detail in uh, in the next video uh, so uh, for now we're just using dissolve and dissolve as a black box and just describing the core functionality in this video um, so let's look at the slightly different version of the same uh, system so over here we wrote this as a single equation that's second order in time we can rewrite the same system slightly differently uh, so um, we can reduce the system to system that's uh, first order in time and I can do that by defining x prime of t to be equal to the momentum or the velocity uh, p of p of t and then that equation x prime x double prime of t will become p prime of t uh, so if you take a prime of this equation you get that x double prime equals p prime so i can simply type p prime of t equals minus x here and let's delete this and then the initial condition for x can stay the same and the initial condition now instead of x prime i'll have p of zero that is going to be zero and uh, my unknowns now are not just x but they are x and p okay so what i have done now is i have reduced a second order equation I reduced it to a system of first order equations, first order differential equations in time. So only first order time derivatives show up here. Uh, the price we pay for that is that now we have to deal with a system of equations instead of a single equation. Um, and the degrees of freedom have doubled. So previously we had only x of t to solve for. Now we have x of t and p of t. Uh, but we will see in the next video that it's actually easier to solve systems that are uh, first order in time uh, rather than second order in time. So this is why we're going through this process. So if we ask Mathematica to solve this system, uh, it again finds the same solution as before. So x of t is again cosine of t. It couldn't be anything else. We use the same initial conditions. But now we also get the derivative, which is p of t. Um, and it's interesting to plot the solution. Um, but we'll do that in a minute after we solve uh, for the same system numerically. So to solve for the same system numerically, uh, let's use and dissolve. So I'm going to copy paste this. I'm going to use and dissolve here. And I'm going to take t from ti to tf. And ti and tf have been defined earlier. Uh, there, I'm going to use the same values as before. But let me just copy paste them here. Um, so let's try and dissolve. And then again, we get a, a solution. And uh, let's try and define this solution. Let's call it solution four. Uh, and let's define the solution as a function. So we want x of t to be x of t slash dot solution four bracket bracket one. Uh, so that will pick up this replacement rule. It will replace x by the interpolating function that shows up here. So uh, we see that x of t got defined uh, from that solution. And let's call capital P of t to be P of t. And then the rest of it is the same. Mathematica will look for P of t in this solution and we'll apply this replacement rule um, so indeed it replaced p of t with this interpolating function 
So now if I want to, I can plot these results, these numerical results, x of t, t from t initial to t final. And uh, again, I can subtract the analytical solution if I want to see the error. Now the error is a bit larger because we're solving a system. Uh, but in any case, uh, you can improve the accuracy if you want to by setting a different accuracy goal and so on. Uh, now we also have P of T. Let's put some access labels here. T uh, and X of T and uh, let's put here T and P of T. Okay, so now we see this is the position, this is the momentum or the velocity. And we know that when the position is the maximum, the velocity has to be zero, as expected. Um, and what's interesting uh, is to do a phase portrait of this uh, orbit. So to do that, we can use the command parametric plot. So if I type question mark and then parametric plot, we can see the syntax that we need to use. Um, so in particular, I want to do parametric plot and then the X axis, uh, on the X axis, I want X of T, uh, just like shown here. And on the uh, Y axis, I want the momentum P of T. And then the parameter with respect to which I'm doing the, this parametric plot is T and I'm taking T to be from T initial to T final as usual. So that's the syntax that we're following here, right here, the first line. Um, and let's try that. And we see that uh, the plot is a unit circle, basically. The, that's the orbit. So. Um, Let's, for concreteness, let's add access labels again um, to make this clear. So um, the x-axis is x of t. Uh, let's just call it x and the other axis is p. Okay, so as time goes by, the oscillator in the phase space is going around and around like that. Uh, we will see more details in the next video when we solve this numerically with our own methods. Um, so the exact solution obviously uh, is x is a cosine of t and p is a sine of t and uh, both of these should go on, a, on the unit circle. Numerically this condition may get violated so you may get an in spiral or an out spiral. Uh, if energy is not conserved by your method numerically. Uh, so we'll see examples of that in the, in the next video. Um, so we, before we conclude this video, I want to show a final example, uh, which is a kind of nonlinear oscillator. That's the Van der Poel oscillator. So let's again uh, integrate over five periods. Um, but instead of the harmonic oscillator that we had before, uh, let's add an extra term that is a nonlinear term. So uh, this usually, if you look up the Van der Poel oscillator or the Van der Poel equation, uh, so Van der Poel was doing research uh, on uh, the electric currents that go into the heart. Uh, and uh, what happens if you put a pacemaker and he was doing experiments and he had he found that uh, 
one of the very first examples of deterministic chaos, basically. Uh, and um, let's try and solve this equation numerically and see what happens. Uh, so there is a parameter here, traditionally, me or mu. Uh, let's set this equal to one. And uh, if you ask Mathematica to solve this analytically, it will not be able to find an answer because this is a, a nonlinear equation and uh, there's no easy way to solve it analytically. Um, but we can still try and solve it numerically. And again, the syntax is exactly the same as for the um, harmonic oscillator. All, every other command is the same. Uh, the only difference is that there's an extra term showing up here in the equation. Uh, so let's try and solve this numerically. Mathematica managed to compute an interpolating function. Uh, let's set this uh, solution. Let's define it to be a function x of t slash dot solve five one. Okay, and now uh, it's interesting to do a phase portrait. Now, of course, I could reduce this to a first order system as before and plot x and p. Uh, but uh, Mathematica is nice enough that it can actually calculate the derivative of this interpolating function uh, directly. So if I simply type x prime of t, Mathematica will differentiate this solution. And you can only see what it looks like. Uh, so this is uh, very convenient uh, because it means we don't have to bother uh, and reduce this to a first order system and evaluate the derivative or and define the momentum and so on. We can just directly differentiate this expression. After all, this interpolating function contains uh, cubic polynomials uh, in it and Mathematica can just differentiate those polynomials analytically to to calculate this these derivatives and that's what it uses to to calculate this uh, x prime of t so now if I want to plot the result x of t from t i to t f t initial to t final then this is what the solution looks like uh, let's put axis labels again okay so this is x as a function of t and uh, we can also plot the momentum or the velocity uh, so x prime of t here So again, Mathematica differentiated this polynomial uh, or piecewise polynomial. So um, these are many polynomials joined together at different uh, points. So it differentiated that result and calculated the, the derivative x of t. Um, and if we want to do a phase portrait as before, uh, we can simply use this command uh, but now instead of p of t I can just use x prime of t uh, and I suppose I can use x prime here uh, let's type f x of t here um, and we see uh, the result so um, the orbit started around here. We started from x equals zero and x prime equals, I'm sorry, x of t equals one and x prime equals zero. And then the orbit goes into something that's called a limit circle. So if you're familiar with uh, dynamical, nonlinear dynamical systems and chaos, um, many chaotic systems have a, a limit circle. And that's uh, a kind of orbit, a closed orbit in phase space, to which uh, which is an attractor. So 
you can start from here or from here uh, wherever you start if this is a stable limit circle uh, then the orbits will end up arbitrarily close to, to this circle um, okay we will see more examples of that in the next video for now I just wanted to cover the basic ways with which we can quickly find analytical and numerical solutions to ordinary differential equations with Mathematica uh, and in the next video we will cover runge kutta methods, Taylor methods, Hermite methods and so on uh, that you can use to solve all these differential equations explicitly yourself and of course you can compare your own numerical solutions to those of Mathematica. Thank you.